How's it going out there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening as well to those out there. It is a Friday, finally, January 3rd, 2025, about 1044 local time here in the AM, California. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a uh, 2.8 across the area. Well, 1.5, and there's a 2.8 somewhere out here on the globe in the red flag. Uh, 1.5 there in California, 2.8 across the area of the Philippines. Let's go ahead and check in here across the West Coast, see what's going on for the latest activity in the earthquake world. A couple of earthquakes here late last night, or early this morning, I should say, 3.6 and a 3.2. Things starting to continue to uh, kick up here across the area of Northern California. Of course, this is where that uh, seven-pointer struck here a few weeks back. Still seeing some aftershock sequences there following that movement. Uh, as far as the rest of California, the Bay Area, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot of happenings going on there uh, for now. Southern California, a couple small microquakes there in the last hour. Uh, one earthquake above 2.5 there in Goldfield, Nevada. That's been an area of interest here for earthquake swarming in the last few months up against the western side here of Nevada. Uh, Southern California, as I mentioned, just a couple smaller ones. No major swarming going on there for now uh, across the area. Uh, up into the Pacific Northwest, I believe this is from yesterday. A couple smaller quakes are around Mount Hood. Nothing major going on there across the area for now. Yellowstone, well, as you can see, pretty uh, absent of earthquake activity. We'll double check that just for uh, verification purposes here, which uh, shows us not a whole lot of uh, earthquake activity out here on the seismos. Pretty quiet. There's that six-pointer there showing up on the seismos from yesterday, though. That's a six-pointer that popped way down in the Chile area. Just about ready to drop off the 24-hour threshold. Uh, let's see here. Typical movement up there across the Utah area through Nevada. Pretty much follow a line of activity out here. It's very visible if you pull up the last 30 days. Just right up in this fashion here across that area of course that's right up against the uh pretty close to the north american craton here which is a center mass mass of uh the continent sits in this area generally that's some stable land that uh, really doesn't see a whole lot of earthquake activity uh, so therefore that's why you see you know absence of activity here canada area down into the uh, northern plains central plains area and then around it, you get uh, the warping and the uh, earthquake activity there as things move around the uh, North American Craton area. Center portion there that's been relatively stable in terms of uh, any plate tectonics. Uh, let's see, New Madrid Seismic Zone, though, that sits outside the new uh, or outside of the uh, North American Craton region, intraplate area of earthquakes couple of earthquakes there this morning it looks like 2.2 and a 2.9 continuing to shake that area it's been uh, definitely been elevated out here in the last couple months here across this area of the new madrid seismic zone but that uh you know who knows uh, whether we could see a big one here in the future or in the near future or not remains to be seen Obviously, 1811, 1812, since the uh, last series of large earthquakes struck here. You know, that's 200 and something years of uh, some built-up strain out there. These little earthquakes, just a reminder that it's still very much active. All right, so far as the largest activity here in the last 24 hours is going to be that uh, six-pointer from yesterday. That's the second 6.0 earthquake so far this year. Uh, following that, looks like a 5.5 .5 here in Ethiopia where we're still seeing the rift boundary stay quite active. That's uh, the Great Rift Valley. The section of land here uh, called the Somalia Plate is slowly separating here from uh, the region to the west. And uh, there's just been a lot of earthquake activity out there recently. If we look at the uh, last 30 days, <coughs> excuse me, got about 64 earthquakes of... Uh, decent magnitudes the one this morning a 5.5 .5 is actually the largest in this sequence so some it looks like something's getting a little bit more active here a little bit larger activity than what we've been seeing in terms of that magnitude level there was a 5.2 and a 5.5 .5. and uh, just 
I'm kind of watching this, waiting to see what's going to happen here. Now, whether we see a return of activity here to the Fintel volcano, which sits very close to the earthquake activity. Uh, the last eruption there was uh, back in 1820. Now, this, you know, looking at this map here, it looks like it's more of a broader scale event instead of localized here to this volcano. There's the uh, Fantel volcano area. You can see it on the map, the crater area. Uh, this is more of a dynamic situation uh, that's taking place out there, about six miles underneath the area, and it's uh, just interesting. Uh, you know, it's a rift boundary. Things are going to slowly separate, but uh, we'll watch and see where this leads us. Uh, let's see what we got here on the Earthquake 3D Globe for the rest of the world. Uh, movement north here of New Zealand today. It looks like 4.7 around the uh, Kermadec Trench. A couple of earthquakes out there in Australia. Really not seeing anything big out there. This is the uh, typical crunch zone here around the Java Trench, Indonesia Islands area, up to the Taiwan region. That uh, just always active out there. Some newer, deeper activity here into the Kuril Kamchatka Trench with a 4.2. That's an area of some interest right up here. Been waiting on some major earthquake activity here recently. Um, and we've seen, you know, there's been a little bit larger activity, six pointers and uh, 6.8. But this area is a major subduction zone and it's, it's capable of producing something way above a seven. So it's, uh, it's been a little while since we've seen uh, some sufficient earthquake activity up there across that uh, subduction zone. So just kind of watching that with that renewed deep activity, 4.2 there, fairly recent. USGS not reporting that earthquake though. Uh, nothing major going on there across the Alaska area for now. And out there on the uh, big island of Hawaii, let's take a look here and see, uh, see what we got. Where'd my, uh, hmm. there we go, Kilauea Volcano. Still in eruption stage there with an orange and watch status for the uh, volcano. I was looking at this this morning, still quite active there across the crater area uh, along that crater wall. This is actually a lot bigger than it looks. This is not just a localized area. That's a, these are bushes and trees up here. So this is a massive area. Fountaining still confined there to the area on that, uh, the, uh, the crater wall region. And, of course, that's slowly filling up the uh, lava lake area of Kilauea Volcano. Uh, aside from that, there's really not anything changing out there. Deformation data probably will show us that things are going down in terms of inflation following the release. Look at that gradual deflation. And that makes sense here because uh, we're just free-flowing the magma from the area below up to the surface for the lava fields there at the uh, crater lava lake. A pretty nice nosedive here, but that makes sense, right? So uh, I don't know how long that's going to continue, but we're, we're down a little bit, almost matching uh, a previous level eruption there back in September, end of September. Uh, so we'll have to see how long this stays uh, active. Possible it could go for a little bit, but uh, it's dropping actually quite nicely there in terms of the... Uh, um, deflation so accumulation of magma below is starting to uh, uh, go away let's see anything else major going on out here oil fields of texas getting hit uh nothing new there no major swarms in southern california for now The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. One earthquake up there around Iceland. And uh, Mediterranean area, fairly active here today. So a bunch of fours out there around Turkey. Uh, the um, Crete area, it looks like. Numerous earthquakes. Uh, nothing major going on, but uh, definitely quite, quite a bit of activity stirring up out there today. Something going on, obviously, underneath this area to get the rift boundaries going. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Space weather activity? Well, there was an X-flare last night, or early this morning. 
Not a big one and really not earth directed, but we peaked up here around the X1.2 category there on the X-ray flux chart. That came off of a, uh, a far side region over here, northeastern limb of the sun, popping off an X-flare. Uh, it's going to be this area right here. Uh, newly assigned active sunspot region 3947 in the northeastern quadrant of the sun. Even if that did produce a CME, that's a ways away from Earth as far as the direction goes. A little updated image there on, uh, well, I can't say updated, but they put out a um, little notification on this. The Space Weather Prediction Center is aware of the outage here with the Aurora uh, forecast. Kind of surprising. We've been getting all these things going offline lately with the uh, with uh, solar activity. Uh, flare threat has jumped up a little bit because of this sunspot region there on the northeastern uh, quadrant of the sun. 15% chance for X-flare. M-flare 55% chance there today. So got uh, a possibility of seeing some more X-flares from that active area. 3947 over there. Number of sunspots currently facing the Earth. Actually quite a bit out here. But uh, hard to tell in terms of complexity. Um, I was looking at the uh, flare chart here, and even though, you know, we had that little low-grade X flare, uh, the status here, it doesn't look all crackly and poply, you know, poply, that's not even a word, but it doesn't look as, uh, I can't think of the word I'm actually look, looking for, but a lot of times when we get these complex sunspots, they really start to look crazy in terms of a lot of up and down and instead of a neutral type line like that it uh, normally shows instability and complexity within the sunspots er sunspot area uh, but i'm not seeing that right now and of course we don't have any imagery that uh, would be able to help us with complexity comparison uh, this is still offline hopefully they'll get that back up and running so it's just kind of a little rare you know that uh this stuff has been going offline a little odd as uh, far as Aurora activity, looks like coming up on the 4th and 5th here, January, so the UTC time, that's uh, is this old? Yeah, this is old here. This is still off. This is a forecast here, and that's still offline. But looking at the uh, coronal holes here, they have been facing Earth here for about a day or so. Uh, so in the coming nights, we should see a little bit of amplification of the auroras due to the high-speed solar wind stream that is flowing from that uh, massive coronal hole. Takes a couple days to get here, but uh, we could see the auroras on the uptick here in the next couple nights. And of course, if anything else blasts off out here in terms of uh, CME activity. All right, severe weather outlook here today. Really not seeing anything major going on for severe weather. Just some thunderstorm activity in Northern California. Uh, day three does have a slight risk for some severe weather. Uh, this is going to be on Sunday into Monday. Uh, slight risk. That's going to be associated with the cold air that's coming down here from the north, interacting with some of the warm moisture air down there in the Gulf. Creating uh, some ice, snow on the backside, and of course severe weather potential around that area, uh, around this area south as well. So this is just going to be a, a mess of an event as we end the weekend and start early next week. And the pattern out here just shows consistent cold air and clashes with warmer moisture down here for the uh, severe weather department uh, throughout the next few days. Just massive cold air coming down and it, the pattern appears to be stuck in that type of uh, setup so a lot of cold air get used to it california yeah pretty boring um average temperatures really no rain after today's event i think i picked up about a quarter of an inch of rain overnight and this morning uh, but after that we're drying out here for the foreseeable future along the west coast and that's not good january is uh uh, technically our wettest month out here and man it's looking dry uh, 
uh, estimated snowfall out here. Let's take a look at this and see who may uh, see who may be getting some snow um, down into Texas, maybe. Of course, a lot of this here could be some ice uh, across the area. Uh, but either way, you know, with this cold air, there's obviously a possibility if there's enough moisture to get some snowfall out there in these uh, unusual locations that normally don't see the snowfall. Uh, looks like it's backed off a little bit in terms of snow around Florida. Uh, let's see here. And again, looking at these models, I really don't see any pattern change coming up just uh why that gosh gotta get rid of that high pressure offshore off off the west coast otherwise it's just gonna stay stuck in this pattern all right well we'll see what happens see what mother nature has in store here as we uh continue about the 2025 year seismograph stations here one little earthquake down in chile uh, aside from that, things look uh, pretty quiet out there across the board for now. We'll continue to watch this and monitor it. I'll be off here just on the side getting uh, a lot of these uh, packages sent off here for uh, decals and uh, Earthmaster pins. I'm going to be mailing them on probably on Monday or Tuesday. I got a, a little bit overwhelming amount, but that's okay. I offered... And you guys want it, so there's nothing wrong with that. I'll get these sent out, like I say, Monday or Tuesday. And uh, so look forward to that. Aside from that, folks, enjoy your Friday. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be off here on the side kind of watching things. Take care.